and then some cords to tighten it. This was in the bedroom? Yes, sir. Did he, in fact, uh, suffocate and die as a result of this? Not right away. No, sir, he didn't. What happened to him? Uh, well, after that, I, uh, I didn't miss this one terribly. What's up, peeps? That was my little video I did. Uh, the girl in the video is BTK's daughter, Carrie. And uh, <clears throat> I'll, I'll drop some of her stuff in my uh, community page. But she's an advocate for victims. And she's an advocate for families of serial killers. She actually does a ton for them. Uh, the picture in the video was Dennis Rader dressed like one of his victims which we'll get to and uh an especially bizarre person especially bizarre that he commented on rex Huerman. so uh yeah stay tuned for this i know i tell you guys ah these guys this guy's sick that you know they all are but uh dennis raider is uh the scariest kind of killer that there is to me by a mile by a mile. And, and I'll tell you why. And uh, I sound like my basketball coach, Coach Pasola, he used to say. I'll tell you why. But let's see whoever, everybody in the chat. Uh, just Deb, Honeybee, Jinx, of course. Saw a lot of these people earlier. Everybody saying hi to everyone. Nobody. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when you look at him now, you know, yeah, you could definitely, I, I don't know if you could see it or not. I mean, I'm not that good to see it. I usually get vibes off of people, uh, whether in public or even, even online, I think. But, God, you can't miss it now, can you? Yeah, very scary man. Dave. A lot of you guys were in Rick Snay's before. Everybody's saying hi again to each other. Yeah, I originally, uh, we had some running around to do today. Oh, yeah, he's in prison for the rest of his life, no matter what happens with any new charges. He has uh, life without the possibility of parole. Rockus is here. We're I'm trying to think of his nickname that someone gave him. Oh, my God. It's hilarious. Somebody posted in the chat. You guys know what I'm talking about. I can't believe I forgot that. That nickname was hilarious. Someone will put it in there. Someone gave him a nickname, and it is, it's it's funny. But, yeah, so before we get into BTK, uh, yeah, uh, 
I was in Rick Snay's chat, watched the video. Um, always entertaining. You know, uh, the guy, as far as I'm concerned, has never lied. Uh, here it is. Rocky Cox. Whoops. Yeah. Someone called Ruckus Rocky Cox. I said he should get coffee mugs that say that. I'd buy one of those. Rocky Cox. <laughs> Got to give credit where it's due, right? Got a blue light on here. Uh, going through different things. There was a shooting in Pittsburgh today. Uh, suspect was is dead. I'm not sure what happened. I don't know. I, don't know. I didn't get the details of the police if it was self-inflicted. But uh, one officer was hurt, not shot. The dodging of bullets, but this guy had a neighborhood pinned down for a few hours. They were police were actually taking people out, neighbors out, uh, escorting them safely, like shielding them. So, really good job by uh, Pittsburgh police, Allegheny County police, state police. Uh, FBI was involved. I don't know if they were, they have an office in Pittsburgh, so I'm sure that they went uh, when anything like this happened. So, but I'm trying a different color light, and I figure I'll go with blue tonight because that's something like that happened. But, uh, yeah, Snake gives it to you raw, as we would say back in the day. Uh, you know, I always, my channel, keep it about the case, keep it about the case, keep it about the case. Uh, he does some of that, and he he does some other stuff. And I got to tell you, I watch every episode. I watch every live. It, I'm very entertained by it. And uh, it ain't like he's lying, really. I mean, some stuff that people are saying it could be so easily either proven or proven false. So if someone has a video of someone carrying gasoline, first of all, like I said to someone else before, if you sat on it, what do you who are you who are you defending? Uh, and you've talked to a couple of people that have said this. And if you were there, you would have done this. No, you wouldn't have. No, you wouldn't have. I'm someone who's told a mother that their kids are dead, died, relative. You know, no, you wouldn't. Because we couldn't with what we have on. So uh, anyone that's been in that situation or not been in that situation, to ever make a comment like that about a mother, it's a heinous comment. It's a uh, irresponsible comment. And if you put it in context with all the other comments, you understand why he's making it. Absolutely. So, you know, hopefully he just goes away as far as the floor case goes. Uh, you know, do whatever at this point. That That's your best bet. I mean, uh, or these people are going to eat you a fucking live. Uh, I just, you know, send me what you got. If you have it, send it. If you don't, then you, you then you, you don't have it. Clearly you don't. So in meth lab, uh, to the lay person that's not a firefighter or investigator or anything like that, one of the telltale signs of a house fire not being a, a meth lab is it doesn't fucking blow up, okay? Uh, rotten egg smells, meth lab equipment. It, it's just, it, it's just, uh, yeah. Yeah, Ruckus, uh, I'm hoping to have that here before Thanksgiving myself. Even if it's down by then. You know, just the, uh, I think the whole area and, and being able to identify where all the other fires were there. You know, I know this isn't a floor episode, but everything kind of gets into it a little bit. And I don't think anyone has a problem with talking about it. But yeah, I mean, those things are just, it, they're, they're, they're absurd. They're absolutely absurd. Put aside the racial comments that he made. Put those aside. Honestly, just put them aside for a second. So if you have a video of this, these people have video of this, you don't think that the cops would have had that video in almost seven years? Are you fucking kidding me? So do the right thing and just say, listen, I, I got bad information. I, I you know, whatever. I'm just going to bow out gracefully. I mean, are these people are going to chew your head up? I'm not coming after you, you know, because uh, I'll do respect. I hope everything goes well for you, but you just don't matter. You don't matter. So and keep it moving. If anything, you rallied the troops. So I thank you for that. But uh, on to other things here, uh, while we're there, yeah, I'll message you, Rock, because I messaged it to Jinx, too. Uh, anniversary time is what I was thinking. You're a cop, Rock, so you could figure that out. I don't really want to announce my arrival because uh, of the various reasons, which I will tell you ahead of time, too. Uh, you know, hopefully, you know, one person to talk. It's all it takes. One person. That's all it is. Anyways, 
BTK, BTK, BTK. So let me show you something first, exactly what, what's, what's going on here. Currently, what's going on with, with the search that's been happening. Now, I was in my mail. I got to go back in. Here we go. This is from ABC. I'm checking my cell phone to make sure that this is all working. Okay. I'm not able to see the chat right now, but I'm going to go over this real fast. I hope everyone can see it okay. I'll share this also. Sorry for all the ads and all the craziness going on in the background here. I didn't realize it would look like this. Uh, BTK serial killer has been named the prime suspect in two unsolved killings, one in Oklahoma, another Missouri. Leading authorities to dig this week. There's former Kansas property, Park City authorities announced Wednesday. Now the house is torn down. It's one of them deals where the city tore the house down. We don't need to see it. Blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. So uh, they're digging there, though. You know, they could find a lot of shit after a very long period of time, including cell phones and water for up to five years, which doesn't have anything to do with this, but it's interesting. Uh, I'm not sure how to say this pro properly, so pardon me, Jim Ross, if you're listening. Osage County, Oklahoma, Under Sheriff Gary Upton told the Associated Press that the investigation into whether Dennis Rader was responsible for additional crimes started with the re-examination last year of 1976 disappearance of Cynthia Kinney, 16-year-old cheerleader in, goodness gracious, Paul Huska. The case, which was investigated on honor for years, was reopened in December. So something, uh, I don't know if it was a cold case deal, but it was reopened in December if they have a squad or whatever. But basically, I'm, I'm going to save you some uh, reading here, but you could read it too. There's really, they don't say exactly what it was, okay? ADT at the time, so when he worked for ADT, he was also in Voight. So he's in the area. I could put him in the area, but you would think that over the years, especially with the FBI being there, they would have looked everything around there. Maybe they did it. New alarms installed across the street from the laundry. So she goes missing from a laundromat. He, he's basically doing stuff across the street. Uh, included the phrase bad laundry day in his writing. So everyone's kind of like putting stuff together now. Is it possible? Yeah. Well, do they have anything we don't know? I mean, they're not saying. I haven't found out yet if they are. I haven't found out yet if they are. So. I will share that, like I said, on my, uh, on my page. So they put him in the area. I mean, would he be doing it further away? We're going to get into this type of stuff and this, this, his mentality, what I think it was. And then, then the Rex Huberman stuff, which is, I mean, it's one of those things where, yeah, it's probably just, uh, I mean, it's weird coincidence, right? You know, <laughs> but it, it, it's, I'll tell it to you. It's bizarre. It's bizarre. So, so they're digging right now. We don't know anything else. They're obviously going to be tight lipped. Dennis Rader himself is not being cooperative. I'm not surprised at that. Now, he will talk when he's backed into a corner or when he's convicted or whatever the case may be because he's going to love this limelight. He's going to savor it. He's going to have another hour and 20-minute court appearance where he's able to recall details about murders that happened uh, almost 30 years before, just about 30 years before, if you go to the first one, from the time of his confession in court. And there's no paper, there's no notes. He gets a couple addresses wrong, but intimate details. And the judge is just, you know, the judge is, it, it wants to get him to say as much as he possibly can. There's no way this is going to be overturned. And, and the judge is doing what he has to do. But Raider appears to me is enjoying it. Now, his daughter, who recently reached out to him, I told you guys on another live about Dennis Raider, BTK being investigated again. His daughter, Carrie, was on another a program that I watched. Uh, Surviving the Survivor, it's a really good uh, crime psychology type show, serial kill, you know, you're, that type of stuff. Uh, they have really good guests on. And she was on with actually Dr. Bricado and Dr. Burgess one day, and she tipped off that there's, there's more there's being looked at. So this is about two or three weeks ago. And uh, since then, we found out that through the FBI, she went and tried to talk to her dad, but it's unknown exactly what her dad said, but he was not cooperative with her. He hasn't, she hasn't spoken to him in 18 years. 
So I think what the ploy there was, hey, go in and talk to dad and say, dad, if you if you can tell me, you know, information about these and put these people's families, you know, a little bit of closure and just let him know what happened. We could have a relationship again or something like that. And uh, he scoffed at it or didn't do it. But this is part of his game. You have to catch him. He's not going to give it up, even though he kind of did give up himself like an idiot later on. But, you know, this is what I think is happening. And then uh, I don't know if it was in a discord thing today, but right now, you know, what do you think he's doing? I think he's he's, he's at the peak of excitement right now. He is uh, probably doing things to himself in the cell. He is just he, he's he's back in the news. And he's going to tie himself into this Rex Hewerman stuff, too. Okay. I might as well tell you guys that. Let me ask a couple questions. I was going to kind of put that at the end, but I hate when people keep leaving cliffhangers up. Yep. Snay's blind. I watch every one of Snay's episodes. Every one of them. Uh, I'm entertained. He has some good, uh, he did some good coaches today. He does a Ron Logan impression that just, it makes me spit my tea out. Yeah. Well, Jinx, yeah. The people that know about floor know all these things. And that's why whenever, so like if someone would say that Galen Rose did this for some kind of reason, I wouldn't necessarily jump down their throat if they didn't know about the case. And I'm like, well, what's your theory on it? And if they had a plausible theory of like, well, I vehemently disagree with you on that theory, but uh, okay. Uh, I could kind of see where you're coming from, but he carried, she carried gasoline. Well, maybe she didn't carry gasoline. Maybe she poured it out of our lawnmower. Yeah, yeah, that that maybe, yeah, yeah. Or maybe a fucking elephant came from fucking Africa and floated across the fucking ocean with a fucking container of gasoline and gave it to her. That's the same, that's about as plausible. Yeah, yeah, these things are all, yeah, they're they're almost certainly unlikely. And again, we can prove with the credit cards, but these are things that people don't know. And maybe Fireman did tell him that. Maybe it was the fucking Randalls, huh? Yeah. The only way that you would know every lie that those two fuckers have ever told is if you heard every word they ever said in their lives. I'm just putting that out there. Yeah, everybody's. Yeah, I, I mean, it, I didn't see. I can't imagine anyone's that's going to take that side. He tried to call Rick during it. Uh, have him on. You know, I talked to me out today. I'd, I'd go on. Uh, I don't think that Meow needs me on there, but I'd, I'd gladly go on and and just dis, and discuss amicably like adults and just. Be, and it, but at the end of the day, you have to just show it. If you have a church, don't give it to me. Give it to the cops. But you don't have it because we know that it doesn't exist. It just doesn't exist. So, yeah, I just said that uh, Hiawatha. I don't know. Maybe you probably commented before I said that. Maybe I'm not sure. Maybe same time. But yeah, he wouldn't, he wasn't, I, I guess he spoke to her, but he wouldn't tell her anything. He wouldn't tell her anything. But like I said, it, it, it's, this game's bigger than, he doesn't love anybody. He doesn't love anybody. Uh, when his wife, whenever they were one of the communications to the newspaper and he'd spell the word, I think it was communication wrong. And one of the slides in the picture had that. She's like, oh, he misspelled it the same way you did and kind of made a joke. And he, he said to investigators later at that point, he's like, oh, I'm going to have to kill my wife. Just Simple as that. Like, I got to go get gas. I got to stop the store and get smokes. I'm just, I'm going to kill my wife. I, I'm going to have to do it. He's like, but she let it go. And wh who knows what she meant by that. I don't think that she knew anything that was going on. I don't think that Carrie knew anything. that was, I don't think any they knew anything was going on. This guy's especially scary because he was such a cuber or such a compartmentalizer that he showed different faces to everybody. And he was, he was an Academy Award winning actor, Academy Award winning actor. And at the end of the day, he didn't have any feelings. So I don't think he, during the Otero murders, he got nervous because he didn't expect what he what he got when he got in there. But this was a cold, calm, calculated guy. This was, you know, this this isn't Rex Hewerman. Uh, and let's get to that part now. Let, let's get a couple more. Make sure we got questions. I agree too, Dave. I don't think that he. Uh, I don't think that he he ever stopped. I don't think he could have stopped. I think he, he he's there's a compulsion. Yeah, he did a lot of good impressions today. Frosty is here. What's up, Frosty? Yeah, Dave, an elephant. An elephant is more likely to have brought a fucking gallon of gasoline across the river or across the ocean and and used that been used in a fire. 
Yeah, Jings, we know a lot of things about the Randall. So does the police. But they seem not to really ever do anything. Not this year, Dave. Or last year. Maybe in a year or two. I wonder if Bama's going to get out of the SEC this year, Dave. And I, I, they're just, they've been unbeatable, but we'll see. Okay, so Dennis Rader, he's born uh, March 9th, 1945. Uh, active, quote unquote, 1979 to 1991. 1991 is the no last known murder uh, that he committed. Uh, these other ones would have been obviously after that. Well, I shouldn't say obviously, because I'm supposed to be giving you guys all this scoop. Uh, and the last one, interestingly enough, uh, Dolores Johnson Davis. And she, pantyhose was used in that one. And pantyhose was never used before. He had plastic bags, ropes, plastic bag, rope, knife, gun, rope, belt, hands, nylon stocking, pantyhose. So he went from nylon stocking to pantyhose in the last two. So evolving maybe. Maybe that, that's a different way. Evidently, or I'm sorry, uh, in my opinion, the one that he uses his hands – OK, that was uh, Marine Wall's hedge. That was his neighbor. And that was someone I think he really coveted for a long time. And he wanted to use his hands. He wanted to to feel all that. <clears throat> so Dennis Rader, very organized killer, sadistic, sexual killer. Uh, he's doing this for basically only like sexual purposes. But a long time ago, whether he's reading those detective novels that they said he read, he, he put sex and violence together. There's a story where at 11 years old, with a rope tied around his waist, he's 11 years old. He's, he's uh, taking care of himself in a window, peeping Tom through a lady through a window. At 11 years old, with a rope tied around himself. So he goes back to, you know, he watched these detective novels where these women were bound up and they were clannily, cannily, you know, clannily dressed. Look, I can't even say the goddamn word, scannily dressed. And they were tied up and he got like aroused by that. So it was like that the, they were restrained and this person can do whatever he want. But boom, then a detective comes in and does this. He says at a very young age, he remembers having sadistic uh, thoughts of women trapped in different places or different ways, and he would be able to do things to them. This is even before 11, at a very young age. Uh, relationship with his parents were bad. He especially pointed out distant relationship with his mom. They worked a lot, so uh, he did not have a, what he considered a good relationship with his mother. He was the oldest of four, and uh, none of the other kids, you know, turned out to do this. So uh, something happened to him, though. You know, we always know that. Like, I, it's it's never you're not born. I think it's the three things. It's your 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 DNA, your uh, psychology and your life experiences like jim clemente says uh rope was a big thing for him at a very early age uh not exactly sure why he was a peeping tom he stole underwear these are all these are all sexual related crimes burglary a lot of times is a sexually related uh crime and what's what they found out because it's very intimate and maybe you're taking money and stuff maybe you're opening up drawers and you're looking in drawers even if you don't take anything you're in their personal space uh we know that the uh, the Night Stalker did that. The Night Stalker actually watched people sleep in their house before he evolved to to murder. Uh, so that's it, it. You know, we know that now. So if there's like a string of burglars or peeping toms, the FBI, wherever it is, they're like, well, wait a minute, guys, this guy's going to evolve. He might, he might, not always, but he might. If he finds another way to get his rocks off or to get his, you know, whatever. Maybe he won't do it, but this is what Dennis Rader does. So he was textbook, really. Uh, I don't know about fire starting, but he was known to hang animals, cats, dogs, strays. He would hunt them down. It was always by hanging. Uh, so he was very into rope, and he was very into that hanging fetish, okay? Uh, so the Rex Huerman thing, I'll cut in. So about a month ago, Dennis Rader writes Fox News, and says about Rex Hewerman, oh, he, he's just like me, blah, blah, blah. He's a clone of me is what he says about Rex Hewerman. He's a clone of me. He's a clone of me. Rex Hewerman's a clone of me. Well, there's this is backed up by other profiles. This isn't just me theorizing. But I feel the same exact way. No, not a clone of you really at all. Uh, you're you're uh, John Douglas word. You're, you're fastidious. I don't think Rex Hewerman is. 
Rex Hurman has that that angle or that that meticulous nature, but he's also a big slobbingly sloppy guy that just face fucks pizza, and his house looks like it's fucking gonna fall down. Uh, uh, BTK is meticulous. I mean, his yard's perfect. Everything's perfect. You know, perfect, perfect, perfect. Dress perfect. Belt line perfect. And maybe that was from the military. He was a uh, he was an Air Force guy, staff sergeant. Ended up being a staff sergeant in the Air Force, sixty six through seventy. So. Uh, you know, I don't see it. But why did he interject himself? Did he know that the FBI was close to him? If his daughter knew two weeks ago, would it make sense for him to know a month ago? Hey, they're investigating you. Maybe he's trying to get him out in front of this somehow or somehow control this media or make this narrative last longer. It's a theory I have. I don't have any proof to it. But it's an odd timing. The other thing with Rex Hewerman, and I'm not saying that Rex Hewerman and, and Dennis Rader knew each other ever, anything like that. I'm not saying any of that, okay? There's probably a, there's a less than 1% chance that that's true, maybe, but okay. He referred to his penis as Rex, Dennis Rader did. So in the newspapers, when it, he would write his letters and the police would communicate, they would call him Rex, 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 Rex. And uh, so did that peak the Rex. Hey, I'm going to talk because I call my penis Rex. This is Rex. You know, is that where he injected himself? Was it a combination of that? But if Carrie's daughter knew at least two weeks ago, it stands to reason that he knew too, right? That he knew too. So is he trying to get out in front of this? Uh, so it, it's just some weird co coincidences there. I'm not saying in any way, shape or form. My opinion, uh, Vegas, you're, you're going to, you're going to have murders in Vegas on the East and the West side. Uh, that's coming. You're going to have murders. You're going to have bodies in South Carolina, possibly Maryland. And no one's talking about this Alaska thing, but, uh, God, is that, I mean, I've never been to Alaska, but if I'm a killer, I would think, you know, there's probably some ample places to dump people that maybe people will never, ever be again in, in our lifetimes conceivably. Right. Uh, but back to Dennis Rader. Uh, so his thing was he would pose after the fact, and these pictures are easy to find. And you could make sure that you only find him, not the actual crime scene photos, because those are there too. But he would pose as the women that he would kill. And I don't know of any other killer that did that. Uh, Bruto, Jerry Brutus uh, would wear heels and things like that. But I never remember him posing or anyone posing like what they did. So he was reliving the victim's angle which I don't even understand the psychology of that. John Douglas has a good book on Dennis Rader. Uh, I'm sure he covers it in there. I don't, I don't remember off the top of my head, but it's, it's beyond bizarre, beyond bizarre, okay? Uh, the other thing with him is the sadistic nature. So he would do things by, he would put uh, plastic bags over people's heads. Uh, one, one of them was a child. And when the child would bite through the plastic bag, he... Uh, devised the way to put a plastic bag and then he would put a he put a t-shirt underneath and a plastic bag over the t-shirt he's doing this in a house where uh you know many things have gone wrong this is and they said this is this was supposed to be his first murder and he handled all this great could he have handled it great in his first murder sure or maybe he murdered before it's possible right i don't know but this, that's the Ortega. You know, this is a retired uh, master sergeant, I believe, in the Navy. This dude was a bad dude. And Raider kind of took him by surprise, was only expecting mom and, and the daughter, Josephine. Josephine, the young girl, was the target. And Dennis Raider talks clearly about that in court, talks about what he does and what just absolutely heinous and disgusting things that he does. And But that's why he's there. He That's why he's there. He's there to do this. So all this happens. So he, he devises a way to, to keep the plastic bag on the child. And then there's 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 chair imprints next to where the child died. So police were able to say, well, you know what? Someone sat here and watched this happen. And they sat here long enough to leave imprints in the floor from this wooden chair that doesn't belong. It was moved there, you know. So think about that, how long it would take someone to suffocate. It's a child. And he's sitting there. All this is going on around the house. I don't know if everyone's already murdered or not. And he's sitting there watching it. That's a sadistic. That is. And then he goes back home and has dinner. Like it's nothing because he has zero feelings. All they know is how to fake feelings. 
This dude on all accounts didn't even fake feelings. There's a story his daughter tells where his her, her, her brother drops a plate of pasta on the floor. And that sight of that plate of pasta on the floor and like the red, like blood on the carpet, Dennis Rader started choking his son. Like he turned, they didn't know who he was. He went crazy and he was just so triggered by that. He was so set off by that. And then they kind of grabbed him and he took a step back and he went back to, as she said, being dad, like almost not knowing what he did, or, you know, and, and it's just like that guy was so wild tight. I, I don't see how he's stopping in 1991 and just stopping. Is he doing too good of a job getting rid of bodies? And that's why he writes the letters in 2004, because from 1991, I think 88 was actually the last time he wrote. But I have some stuff here. I actually have a letter that he wrote. I'd like to show you guys. Hopefully we can see it. And hopefully I don't screw it up. All right. This should be it. Yeah, so it's 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 not his handwriting. Not his handwriting. I only use his email for stuff like this, so that's why I have like ten thousand messages. Uh, let's see here. Give me one second. Hopefully, we can see this good. There's uh, I broke this into two screenshots. So I'm just checking my phone. Okay, good. So this was written with the grammatical errors uh, that he wrote. I find a newspaper not writing about the poem on vain, unamusing. A little paragraph would have enough. I know if it not the media fault, the police chief, if he, <laughs> Jesus Christ, he keeps things quiet and doesn't let the public know there's a psycho running around, loose strangling mostly women. There are seven in the ground. Who will be next? I don't know if Dennis Rader's doing this on purpose or not. I got to think he's a pretty smart guy. I got to think that this this is these typos are, are on purpose. I could be wrong on that. I've never heard anyone speak on that, but I, I got to think that, you know, God, is this hard to read? How many do I have to kill before I get a name in a paper or some national attention? Do the cop think that all these deaths are not related? Golly gee, yes. The MO is different in each, but look at the pattern developing. The victims are all tie up most, been woman phone cutting, bring some bondage. I mean, you guys are getting the point here. And this is what he's sending to the, uh, the newspaper. This actually, I'm, this one might have been, I this one to the police. He wrote to everybody. Right to a lot of people. He mentioned Son of Sam, Jack the Ripper, Harvey Gladman. If you watch Mind Hunters and you see that scene where they're interviewing David Berkowitz and they ask him about Dennis Rader and they show him the symbol and David Berkowitz kind of laughs like, oh, it looks like boobs. Well, I'm pretty sure that's what it is, but it says BTK. And then he's calling him, I think, Kansas or Wichita in the episode every time he refers to him. And he said, what's his, you know, what's his MO? How does he do it or whatever? So, uh, these are things that I can also share with you. This is what the FBI had to say. This is going to be hard for you guys to read, I'm sure, here. Let me see. Yeah, I'll read it to you. Many criminal psychologists consider Dennis Rader to be a quintessential psychopath and capable of experiencing empathy for his victims or accepting responsibility for crimes. Rader described himself as a natural-born predator. He called it also... Uh, Factor X. There's Factor X. Yeah, Factor X. Jack the Ripper had it. He had it. Uh, I could share this too. <clears throat> this is a really good. I like looking at timelines, like with pictures and things. Not, not just look at me sounding like I want to read books with pictures, which I do. But uh, you know, putting everything together, having faces there. So these are all things that I'll share on my community page when we get off here, uh, and it kind of gives you timelines of his life. The killings. I have a, a map here. We know, that, like, you know, that there's different names for them, uh, but they'll have like a, a circumference from the killer's home, five miles or something like. They've heard different numbers. 
Uh, and this is kind of where they stay. It's their safe zone or their happy zone or, you know, that's not really a good name for it. But And it kind of gives you all that. Again, stuff that I will share. So this is a cool thing. And again, man, I want to make this bigger. Oh, hold on a second. Here we go. Oh, that didn't work. I'll share these too. Uh, so basically, this is from an FBI symposium. And I'm sorry it's so small. No one can see it. But I will share this. And it talks about how they use the media in a BTK case. They, they ran like 10 to 15 press conferences uh, by the same lieutenant. Let me go back here. Yeah, I'll share that too. Modus, notice operandi for uh, Dennis Rader, tools of the trade, kind of stuff that he had. There's a picture of his bag. He called it a hit kit. Uh, had projects, like I said before. He had over 200, according to his daughter, Carrie, over 200 projects. But I'll share all these things on my community page so we could check all that out. So let me see if I got any more questions or anything that we haven't gone over. I have a few more things that I want to talk about with Mr. Raider. Well, thank you. Trying it different. Prison snitch. Okay, yeah. So let's get to how they caught BTK. So from 1991 till uh, 2004, he's quiet. Now, the FBI paperwork I have says 19, 1988. Maybe that was his last communication. They think last known murder in 1991. So for those 13 years, he's quiet. Do, do serial killers stop killing? Uh, did Jerry D'Angelo in, in California, did he age out? As far as I know, yeah. Uh, he was a miserable motherfucker to the very, he still is. Uh, but I don't know. Usually they get caught or they die or, you know, or, or they move and or do something different. But is it conceivable that Dennis Rader got too good and uh, maybe he got caught or almost got caught at the last one in, in 1991 and then he started disappearing bodies he wasn't leaving them anywhere he was taking them having his phone with them places he would take them was to his church one time he took a victim to his church he was the i think the head deacon or the president of his church and that's how, one of the reasons they found him he took one of the victims to the church and took pictures of her in these bondage outfits and then he would reenact the outfits later he said Sometimes after the murder, when he would need to get a thrill, he would do that. And that would that would ease him his 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 frustrations, for lack of a better term, for a little bit longer so he could he could stretch the time out before his next kill. Because he didn't want to get caught. He wanted to keep doing what he was doing, living his double life. And <clears throat> so basically, Raiders leaving cereal boxes in a couple of different places. Uh, he's leaving things like that doll that I showed you around the pipe. That was supposed to be Josephine Otero. That was the, his first project that we knew of was her individually. And she was going to, you know, kill her mom when she was there. I didn't expect everyone else to be there, but, uh, you know, he talks about that, uh, to John Douglas and those guys. And, uh, there's a couple other, there was other criminal uh, behavioralist, actually more than John Douglas at that time. Doug, Douglas was kind of out of it then uh, that did it, but he did work the case. He, he did help. You know, some of his things in his profile were off, but, you know, they knew he'd be very meticulous, uh, obviously an organized killer, very sadistic. Uh, when they were able to see like marks like the chair and, you know, watching people die, he, he got a thrill out of that. So as far as we know, he never, ever uh, uh, essayed any of the people. As far as uh, him entering them in any way, everything was done to satisfy himself uh, on top of them. I don't really know how else to say it, but this guy, you know, th th these are what these gets this guy's going. When he was young, he talked about his grandma killing chickens and how excited it made him. And he didn't say the age and he did say this to an agent where it almost sexually excited him. The, the, the blood and the excitement, you know, the, the whole thing. Oh, we're going to have a chicken for dinner. So we're going to pick a chicken and we're going to cut the chicken's head off. And 
it's going to run out and shoot blood out. So I guess uh, wherever he was at or whatever, I guess it was kind of a big deal. Hey, let's go see the chicken. And here it is. Oh, hey. But uh, he was excited by that. So it, he probably had these feelings younger at a younger age. And uh, just, uh, you know, he was like a shark. Yeah, Alaska. There's some wild shit out there. BTK, definitely sick. Definitely sick. Yeah, those are the, these are, I'd say Bundy and the Night Stalker. Night Stalker for sure I know the most about them. Probably Bundy. I'd always put my polls up and no one would ever pick Bundy. Bundy was so fascinating of how, you know, you know, he had his normal, normal routine growing up. But I believe that it's it's been it's been disputed. But I believe that he found out about age thirteen or fourteen that his mother, his sister was actually his mother, and there's a chance that his grandfather could have impregnated his sister, impregnated his, his his own daughter, which was Ted's mom. That's unconfirmed. We know that his grandfather was tough as shit and was very tough on Ted. But you know, Ted had things. Uh, Yeah, I think we're he's talking about the family too. So yeah, so Golden State, it appears that he aged out because I would think with all the DNA that they have, that he, that he start, they haven't found anything else after that. And obviously he's in the system now. Uh, the Zodiac, I just don't know. I mean, I don't know. I've heard so many different theories. I've heard theories that it was multiple people, and I just don't know. I don't know. I, I don't, the Zodiac movie was great. I don't believe it was Arthur Lee Allen. I think he was just a creepy dude who kind of liked some of the attention. Uh, I just don't know with the Zodiac. I don't know. But it certainly is possible that if, you know, those, those code break or that uh, the group, the, the sleuth group, the break code breakers or whatever, uh, I, I just don't know. I don't know if we'll ever actually get closure on it or not, but it certainly is possible that he did. And there's others that have appeared to too, but not Dennis Rader. Like he, no, not him. I just don't see it. He was just, he was too into it and he was ritualistic. So it ain't just about the murder for Dennis Rader. It's about, it's about the lead up to it. So here's a great way I heard it put a serial killer. He's underneath the street light when he's committing a murder, right? Bright street light. It's a dark street. And there's only street lights, say, every 100 feet. That's his brightest. He's alive. Ah, he's all nuts and everything else. So he walks out from underneath that street light and it gets darker and it gets darker and it gets darker. And at one point between the two street lights, it gets as dark as it's going to get. Then when you start passing that kind of point of no return and you get closer to the next street light, it starts getting lighter and lighter and lighter, and lighter, and then boom, you're under it again, and this is how, actually, it might have been a serial killer that described it like this, uh, to one of the FBI agents, I'm not even sure, I'll find out, because this is a really great analogy, so it's either, they're, they're, they're either in their stalking mode, or their chumming mode, or whatever you want to call it, or they're picking, and then they're stalking, whatever the case may be, one of the things with Dennis Rader, and this, he was kind of different, he left some people there, he moved some other people around, is usually with a uh, organized killer, there's three crime scenes. There's the scene of the abduction. There's the scene of whatever he did to the person. And then there's a dumping site. Raider did a lot of things at the same home. But you also keep in mind that we're talking 70s to early 90s. They weren't too concerned with DNA. Weren't too concerned with DNA, right? So anyways, like I was saying before, Dennis Raider can't shut the fuck up because these people cannot shut the fuck up. When Rex Ewerman talks, he's not going to shut the fuck up. He's going to be oh, throwing his arms out and telling you how great he is. And, you know, but he just can't. Another link between Dennis Rader and Rex Hewerman. Rex Hewerman isn't convicted. He is in my eyes because I'm not a judge or jury or a lawyer. I'm telling you, that son of a bitch is guilty as the day is long. But that's my opinion, right? That's what I think and that's what I believe. But so Rex Hewerman mentioned on a date to, with one of his uh, escort girls, the Hillside Stranglers. Uh, he you into true crime. I really like the Hillside Stranglers. The Hillside Stranglers were the most incredibly sadistic. They would torture women. They would find different ways, injecting them with stuff and, and electrocuting them. They'd leave them there, no dumping signs. One time left them spread eagle on a hillside above a police station to taunt the police. Uh, 
but they can't stop and they can't shut the fuck up. And that's what that's what got them caught too. BTK mentions the Hillside Stranglers. You know, he, he mentioned H.H. H. 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 Holmes and uh, the other guy there uh, in that letter, but he's a fan of the Hillside Strangler too, Jack the Ripper. All these guys love Jack the fucking Ripper, right? Jack the Ripper, I believe, what John Douglas says is he was like, they called him a, uh, oh, what, what, was it Henry Cohen? At the time in England, it was a name for like a Jewish vagrant or homeless person or crazy Johnny Cohen, they all gave him the same name, you know, that's John, that's a Johnny Cohen, he's this, this and that, and so this guy that they knew, they never knew who his real name was, and he would have loud outbursts and drink, and he was, he was very unorganized, he was a blitz, he was a blitz killer, they thought he was some kind of crazy doctor, the way these cuts were made, well, John Douglas was like, well, no, not really, he was a blitz killer, he never had a plan, he would attack, and then he'd do all this crazy stuff, and then there's, there's even theories that the reporter was some of the, did some of the writing on the wall, the reporter and the people that took pictures, they were staging the scene to get the newspapers. So I don't know if you guys know that about Jack the Ripper, but there's some wild shit there, but that's John Douglas's perspective. And I usually go along with what he says, but so the, the, the guys also had that in common too. So Raiders leaving these cereal boxes, places, no one's finding him. So he has to tell them in letters, Hey, I did this. I left a cereal box and it's a fucking guy's pickup truck at Home Depot. They get the mat, they get the cameras, they find it, they find this guy's garbage. They go, I don't think they go to the dump, but they find this box. And it was the, I think it was the Wheaties box that I just showed you, or the flakes, whatever it was. And they're like, Yeah, we found it. And he's can I send you some information on a floppy disk? And Dennis Raider, right? Genius, great fucking serial killer. Been a, been doing it for 30 years, getting away with it. Promise me you won't track, you can't track the floppy disk. And the cops are like, Oh no, no, no. We can't track the. We, nah, there's no way to track track the floppy disk, Mister BTK. So you have our word that we won't track it. This motherfucker sent it. How smart can you be? And they caught him. They linked it to a library. They linked it to the church. It had the name Dennis. Uh, so they went to the directory. They looked up Dennis Raider, or they looked up Dennis, and he's like the president of the church. From there, they matched it up in their system. Because uh, the, the 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 video from the Home Depot shoot showed a black Grand Cherokee, and uh, sure enough, Dennis Rader on a black Grand Cherokee. They, they they staked him out. He was a compliance officer. He was uh, he was a dog catcher. He would kill people's dogs some, allegedly without real reasons. He would always bully single women. He had multiple reports of bullying single women, and he kept his trinkets, his trophies, in his office desk. So he could feel smarter than everyone. Every day he sat there. I'm a dog catcher, and I have my shit from being a serial killer right here. No one knows it but me. He had a self, uh, this sense of vibrato. He was bigger than he thought he was. He was special. And uh, at the end of the day, he wasn't. He was just a crazy, not crazy. He was just a cold, calculating, sick human being. One of the sickest that we've ever seen. Uh you know, watching people die and, and, and getting pleasure from it. Children, women, you know, like anybody, but like, come on, man. Come on. Hi, Bossy. Catch the replay. Very good. Thanks for coming in. Bossy made a reappearance in Snay's chat. Dude, Snay unblocked everybody at one point. And I made a comment of anyone got it. We need Egon, Peter, Winston, and Ray. Because it reminded me of the scene in Ghostbusters whenever – uh Whenever that mayor uh, let the the traps go and all the ghosts flew away and then everybody was just like ah, but that was the point. If no one got my '80s humor, sorry. EJ, what's up, brother? I'm sure Jinx already did. If she didn't already, make sure you share EJ's channel. Great show. Yep, you're over there. Great crowd over there too. Oh, thank you, EJ. I appreciate that. So, yeah, I don't know how long you've been in, EJ, but BTK is a guy. If, if I would rank, like, my research, he's probably, like, the four, third or fourth most researched person uh, because, again, I was born in 79, so, like, a lot of this stuff was happening when I was kind of aware, you know, you're hearing this stuff in 04, 05, and there was shows and things about him, too. So, you know, during that time frame, and it was, it, let's be honest, it was the heyday of serial killers, like in the 70s, especially goddamn California. I mean, it could, you know, people say California's nuts now. I, I, maybe it is, but it's nuts in a different way. So, uh, 
Yeah. So he, he worked for ADT for many years. Perfect job. Perfect job. He's getting in people's homes. They're letting him in. Uh, the profile said, hey, he's going to have a, a job that's going to be in some kind of pseudo security or something like that, some kind of uh, authoritative. So I come in your house and I'm telling you, hey, this is to keep your house safe. Does he know codes? Does he know the way to get in? Yeah. Yeah. He's going to know all that. He's going to be able to sit in his van in a neighborhood for 20, 30 minutes, watch somebody's house, write stuff down. And if they come out, he can just get out and walk over a house like he's doing some kind of estimate or something like that. So it was kind of like the perfect thing for him to do. From there, he later got hired as a compliance officer or a dog catcher, which at Park City, I'm pretty sure it was at Park City uh, where he did that. Uh, first time he wrote the newspapers was 1978, W or KAKE TV in Wichita. That, that's whenever he says, you know, I need a name for myself. I bind them, I torture them, I kill them. Uh, you know, he would use aliases uh, with the BTK initials. So he just, in general, he was just, you know, and he's one of these guys, like I said, he has a family, his 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 poor, uh, you know, daughters and wife, they have no idea, no idea whatsoever. And, and if you guys see Carrie on any, I can't remember her last name, I apologize, it starts with an R, but uh, Check her out. She's very good. Uh, if anyone has channels, I'd love to have her on. I don't really know how to get a hold of her, though. Oh. I hope you stay cool. What's up, Miss Persevere? Yep, if you missed what we were talking about, feel free to go. Back, check out, check out the replay. So I just wanted to give like a little update. And there's not a lot, but basically to surmise uh, what we said. Well, thank you, EJ, again. Again, uh, I'm sure probably all oh, my sub sub D. If not, make sure you guys go check EJ out. Always good shows. Miss Persevere, Jinx, always on top of everything. Yeah, share everybody's everything. I don't know if you share Dave's. If you didn't share Dave, I'm sure you probably already did. Jinx is really good. Melissa, what's up? I think I said hi to you before if I didn't. Grim Sleeper. Yeah, there's another one. I don't know that much about that, but I was talking to someone about that with the long break. Uh, and the things that I can never get, if these guys took long breaks, was there ever a reason for it? Or do the guys that took long breaks, they're not doing the interviews? I don't know. I don't understand. I don't know if anyone has anybody, any of the uh, – psychologists or profilers doing interviews where you know they took long breaks and actually talked to the people yeah bossy got freed snay had like 200 people blocked he was reading the names i was dying at some of the fucking names that people came up with to make fun of him if he would have just read every name i would have stayed there the entire time and just laughed my ass off because they were some creative and funny names and he has a sense of humor about it which is awesome i would too uh yeah, Bossy, we were talking about that. Identical twin, twins that kill. Maybe someday or soon or coming up here, we could do something on the uh, the case that you have on my – or share some information with me on. What's up, Deja Vu? There's Dave's channel. Go like Dave. Subscribe to Dave. Dave's a night owl. He does some late stuff. He does really good weather coverage and uh, breaking news stuff. There's Ruckus's page. I hope you all are following Ruckus already. Ruckus doing good work. Ruckus and Steve are going to be the first true crime deal to make a case for. I'm telling you. I am telling you guys. They're really making it happen. So we're coming up on like an hour, Mark. I didn't want to really slam everyone tonight where you know, there was a lot going on early. I don't know if anyone's having anything late or not, but... Uh, that was the kind of what, what we have right now on, on BTK and what's going on. It appears to be two cases, but no one's really saying anything. But I will share. Yeah, Hiawatha. She knows what Bossy was talking about. Yeah, me and him have, uh, I would just say, uh, social differences. Just leave it at that. He goes his way and I go mine. That's all. 
All right, Dave. Well, you can't see it, so don't look at your phone, but we shared your uh we shared your uh channel there. But I am gonna check on out of here. I wanted to give that all to you today. Uh there's a there's a ton of information on Dennis Rader out there. There's a ton of documentaries. I mean, it, he, he's one of the big ones. Ten ten uh murders to his to his uh jacket. So there's certainly been more prolific, but could there be more? And I didn't expect him to, to just say, oh, yeah, I did it. You got to play a game with him. He's been sitting in jail for, what is it now, 15 years, give or take. And, uh, you know, he lives for this shit. So he's going to play back and forth. And if they put it to him, I have no no opinion on the case yet. But it's odd that they're just, you know, like all of a sudden they're going to pull this up here. And uh, where does it end? You know, was he doing it in different states? Is that why that this, you know, we thought he went away? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. And he's leaving that comfort zone. So if they're looking at murder statistics, he might be outside of there. And I'm sure this guy knows this. These guys are fans, man. They're students. Richard Ramirez, as crazy as that son of a bitch was, he was a student. When they put him in a cell and said, this is where we had Angelo Buono, he was in this cell right here. Right. And he knew who that was. So, yeah. Creepy. And that's what got him, mother. That is what got him. He told the cops, you're not going to follow this floppy disk, are you? You can't. And the police were like, no, sir. No, no, no. We would never do that. So he got what he wanted. He got what he deserved. Well, he probably going to get what he deserved because what he did to those 10 people. But nobody, you're exactly right. Hillside Strangler. And I don't know if you were in here before and I said that, but that was one of Dennis Rader's influences. And it was also one of Rex Heuermann's quote unquote favorite killers. So anyways, Jinx, thank you always for doing everything you do. Yeah, come in my discord. It's on my page, I think. My uh, thing. But we have like a tab for that. We have a ton of information about the halls. That it's all weird. It's all bizarre. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, the way twins interact. So, all right. Thank you for coming in, everybody. Hope everyone has a good Wednesday. I wore my Michigan shirt because me and uh, the lovely Miss Brooke are going to the beach here. Uh, be down in North Carolina. We're leaving Friday. Michigan plays Saturday, so I won't be able to wear a shirt. So I don't know if I'll talk to you before then. Or no, I'll try to do a video or two and just, you know, when my three or four minutes won't be from the porch, it'll be from the beach, though. And I'll probably be red as Mr. Krabs in uh, SpongeBob because I don't tan, I burn. But I guess I'm a little tan, though. For me, that's not bad. But I uh, hope everyone has a good week, and I will be back to you soon. And those of you that are in the fantasy football draft, I'll be in there at 2 p.m. tomorrow prepared to talk shit. And make fun of all the Indianapolis Colts because we have a bunch of Colts fans in there. So thank you, everybody, for coming in. I uh, appreciate it always. Uh, you know, spread the good word about Flora. Uh, be nice to people. Get people the benefit of a doubt. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, when your principles are challenged, you have to stand up. And I would expect anyone else to do that. So I'm out of here. I'm going to make popcorn. And watch some true crime stuff on YouTube. So thank you, everybody, once again. Before I go, you know the story. If you have a drink, t tip it up. Because every time we say tentacles, we have to drink. Thank you all. Coach Kev, out.